Welcome back to another product review and today I'm going to take a look at the not only the Wacom Cintiq but also the Intuos Pro and it's going to be kind of a comparison, kind of a face off or kind of a pro and con, what to use, use both or just one and I'm going to throw in an unboxing in there as well. So let's get to the unboxing first after the break. Today I'm going to take a look at the Wacom Cintiq 16 creative pen display. It's a huge oh, thing here. There you go. As always, there will be chapters, so you can skip forward if you don't want to see the unboxing. First, I'm going to take a look at the Wacom Cintiq, but there is a bonus. There's the Express Key Remote. There you go. That is the box. That is bonus one. The Wacom Pro Pen Slim. That is the box here. And at the end, oh, handle with care, the Wacom adjustable stand. There you go, a lot to do. Let's start with the display. All right, let's see, where are we? Massive box, let's cut this open nicely here. That was a very short cut here. Let's take this out. I have no idea what's in here. Okay, we got a description. We have a power cable. Then, let's open this here. I see, so we have Another pen here. This is the Pro Pen, but this is the bigger one. Can't wait to open up the smaller one. We have a manual. This, let's open this clumsily. There you go. That is for the power. More cables here. That goes into here. That's for your power. USB and HDMI. All of that. Tricky tech. Of course, the spoiled cable management person here goes, ah, oh, this should be one cable, but you know, I don't know how this tech works. So this is just me, you know, me saying something. It's not really a complaint or a suggestion. This is the, the ignorance comment, but that's that in terms of cables. And that is that in terms of the box. Back is empty, but here, it's lightly sticky here. Let's open this up. I see, I see. There you go, that is your Cintiq. Got your label here, that is the top, that is the back. You can see here the sides. It's all very thin, nicely done. This is to put your pen inside. Let's go to the back again. You have your adjustable feet. Curious if I can do the same trick uh, as with the Wacom One, but I might not have to because I have that adjustable stand. And in here you will see more connections. Close this again. Looks like you got ventilation shafts. <laughs> Sir, got they got on the ventilation shaft. All right, that's that. It's awesome. I love it already. Get your pen. What is this protective plastic over it? I'm a lefty. This is how I would do this. You got your power and then you can put your pen in there. I mean, as you can see, there's nothing dramatic about this. It's a fairly fast, especially if I cut some parts out here. Fast unboxing, you get the product, you got to plug it in, then you got to test it out. But I like that there's not much, you know, to assemble or any trickiness. It's right there. So far, I already like it. Let's unbox the extra things. Next up is the Express Remote. That is the box here. Very excited about this one. I do love my hotkeys. And it'll be interesting to see how I'm gonna use this to either supplement my stream deck to replace potential couple things. Very curious how this is gonna change my workflow. There you go. That is that. Open up this here. That looks like your USB dongle. That's right. Open this up. And in here we have more manuals. Every time I say more, I just want to say more Lambas bread. Well, you might have caught that in a different video. And on here, it seems to be the charging cable. That's the length. And then in here, we have the remote. All angles, branding. It's very nice, cool design. Actually heavier than I thought. Clicky buttons. You got all your buttons here, but it's nice when you also have that rubbery cushion so it doesn't it doesn't slide around. And then here, ooh, already with some power and then to charge there and then turn it off. I never had this in my hands before. I'm really surprised by, I wouldn't say surprised, I mean, Wacom does really good stuff, but I did not expect something this sturdy and nice feeling in terms of a remote. Probably says more about me than the company. But anyway, that is that. Again, excited to try all of this out. Let's put this back. Next up, we got the Wacom Pro Pen Slim. Get your box, fairly simple here. you think it would be fast opening up this pen box, but this took longer than I wanted. All right, that's interesting. You got this here, probably manuals and things underneath. There we go. That is what you get in here. There's nothing hidden and that's it box wise. In here, 
protective plastic wrap. That is the case branding here for the pen. Take this off and you can see the nibs. Yes, my favorite, the nibs. And you pull this out gently. I'm afraid of breaking this. I've never opened this. I don't know if this comes out completely. I don't think so. <laughs> this is off here. And in here, you have the pen. Cool. I like this protective case, especially when you travel around. Ooh, yes. I like this. I wasn't too sure if I was going to prefer the bigger one or the smaller one here, but after having used the Wacom One, I'm just very used to the smaller pen. It's just the way it handles the feel, the weight and everything. I formed an opinion after all this time and I do prefer the slimmer one. So once again, thank you so much for Wacom for providing me with the slimmer one. It's very kind of them. They listened to watch the review and heard this and said, oh, we'll send you a small one. So I do prefer it. I have to say, I do still like the feel of the big one in terms of the front, the squishiness. It there's something also nice in terms of just because of the compression the squishiness it doesn't hurt it's not uncomfortable and the buttons are nicely accessible there's just something about the smaller one the, the handling i just kind of prefer it so i'm glad i have both and the cool thing is given that they are the same tech they will work across the intuos pro and the cintiq so i'm excited to not have to switch pens you can only use one there shall only be one and that's very cool and if you want to compare definitely smaller all right so many goodies. Last but not least, ooh, it's not that heavy. Handle with care the Wacom adjustable stand. Bam. We have this protective here, adjustable stand, the plates for the back, tiny screws, more tiny screws, plastic thingies here. I actually don't even know what that is. I will find out. Ah, and here's the stand. Ooh, heavy. Nice. And hold on, let's always double check. That's it. Nothing in here. See the mechanism in the back. Well, that is the content. In case you're interested in what is going on in this package. All the different screws. But that's that for the hardware. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this, assemble it, put the display on there, put it on my desk. I got a new swivel arm for my monitor. The whole setup will be totally different. So I'm going to snap my fingers and then we're going to fast forward to see how everything ended up being awesome or not. Probably very awesome. And then I'll give you my subjective two cents. All right, we are in the future now and I've used all of these for quite some time now. And as you can see, my general hair and everything at times have changed because way, way, way in the future. And I have used the Intuos Pro and the Wacom Cintiq 16 for quite some time now. And I have changed a bunch of stuff. First thing that I have actually not used anymore is this. This is just tape on it because to the screws don't fall out, but I don't use that anymore. So let's go straight into the review pros and cons and everything. So at first, the Cintiq 16. This stands, as you can use it here, you can set it on your table, wherever you are, right, in your setup, and then you can bring it up and you bring it down. What I have noticed in my setup is I'm fairly picky in terms of sitting, the posture, standing, I got the, you know, the electronic standing desk here, that this setup was too low. So when I had it up, it wasn't, it was something where I still had to crouch over, and especially when it's flat on the table. It definitely works, but it was a bit, I was concerned about my posture and I started to have some back issues where I was just not, not sitting sitting the way I wanted to sit. So the first thing that I did then was look into a swivel arm. And you can see this here. That is the arm that goes up and down. Turn it here and bring it back. Now, which one was that? I can blend it in here. This is the Amazon basic single monitor stand, lift engine, blah, 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 blah. All of this here. It's currently not available. And my review is that I don't like it. <laughs> So I've installed it, I actually had it on the right side, but then I got a new monitor and I moved my mic around and it's, this is my current setup that I'm somewhat okay with. I would still prefer this mic on the left. So I got to look at other things here, but going to the tablet, it is for me much easier to have it on the side, bring it in and then put it back out. Because what I love about the Cintiq is that it serves as an external monitor. So in my general setup, the way I have it now is that I'm actually using the Intuos Pro and the Cintiq at the same time. It's not either or. As you can see in this view, I have an extra tablet that is for my second computer. So I have like a gaming computer setup and then I have a, an extensive work setup um, where I use the tablet a lot. So what I do is I can grab this bring it down for the critiques. And because it's so small, I still have room for my keyboard, which brings me actually to the second thing I actually use, I don't use anymore, which is a shocker. And that 
is this. I was super pumped. And as you saw in the unboxing, the material is all very solid. I, I like the setup and all the keys you can have. You got the dial here. You got a ton of extra buttons. It's There's a lot you can map on this. And I thought it's going to be something that I'll be using where I put it maybe on here as I do my critiques, but it's fairly small and it slides down. It's not something that's magnetic. That immediately went out the window. Like I can, I, I won't use that here because I do need a keyboard as a critique because I want to flip through and use my hotkeys and so on. So I thought this would be perfect. And at the end, because it's set up like this, I have access to my keyboard and I can go on here. I can draw, I can scrub through this. You can make it a bit bigger. I can scrub through this here. I can go back and forth. I can draw the, the hockey on and off. I have everything here that I need in terms of hotkeys. And when I need to write, all I need to do is lift it, go back to my bigger setup and I can go over all the screens and I can still type and I can go back and then still draw and do my critiques. So that has actually been the biggest surprise that after the whole setup of the express keys, which let me show you, you have here in your desktop center, you got all my devices here. I need some updates, but I can go to the remote here, express key settings. I can bring this into this and you can see that after everything I've done, it's back to being a default because I tried different things. I reinstalled some stuff and I thought I'm going to do like a crazy awesome setup. And at the end, I ended up not using it. Now I'm still hanging on to it because here are a couple of things. As much as I love the setup with this antique, it's great for critiques because I do my critiques at 720p and I upload them on YouTube at 720p and this is a 1080p display. So I can still zoom in, I can do a bunch of stuff and that's that's okay, all works for this. As I have started my work at a new company, I'm doing a lot more drawovers in terms of poses and just like, I can't say too much, but it's generally, I use Photoshop a lot on this display. And I've noticed that the 1080p to me doesn't work anymore, where I have to bring in all the tools and the shelves. And I, sometimes I use Photoshop on a bigger screen, move things around, I got some hotkeys, like I got some like workspaces safe, but ultimately within this setup, Photoshop gets very small. So now that I have everything set up and I'm comfortable with, my eyes are already going towards a bigger Cintiq. This could be the Pro, the 22, like, I don't know, I have to look at what's out there. And I have a feeling that because of my setup at work, I'm gonna switch to a bigger Cintiq, which also means that I'm gonna change this arm because again, I don't like this arm. The arm is, is fine for this and it's fine for that, but then this, and I try to loosen the screws, it's just, it's kind of clunky. I'm not a fan of this arm. Other arms are also really expensive, so I gotta do a lot more research and do some Googling in terms of what are good arms, like what are people recommending? It works for what I have now, like I can do a bunch of stuff with this, but I would love for it to be slightly smoother. Maybe other arms are not smoother, I don't know, but that's my current setup. So going back to Express Keys, if you have a bigger Cintiq, this, it would take up a lot of space, which means I wouldn't have access to my keyboard. Still, I would have the setup where I can quickly lift it and access whatever I have on, on my table. But it would be, I think, as a setup, much more difficult. And if you look at the bigger ones, they do have this where they're attached on the side. Again, I gotta do some research how to do this, but then I would for sure use it. And this is why I haven't returned it. Again, thank you, Wacom, for, for providing this. But I wanna hang on to this because I can see how it's absolutely necessary with the bigger display. Right now, with the smaller one, there are no buttons on this, except the on-off button. So I do need this for the keyboard. And like I said, in my setup, I have access to the keyboard it's totally fine. Maybe comment, let me know. If you're using a bigger display, which one and why I got to dig into all that setup there, I'm very curious. Hanging on to this because I still do like it. What I have noticed though, and this is more on the con side, is that it's, as you saw in the unboxing, it's very, it's very clicky. And that's fine in terms of feedback, I know I clicked something, but what happens, and it's turned off by the way, so nothing's happening. When I do critiques, and I, I I use this at first to flip through images and like my keyframes and my bookmarks and everything, it ended up being loud with my microphone. The mic picked up all the clicking, and that was actually one of the first things like, ooh, that's kind of too loud. It's a bit distracting in the recordings. So that's one of the things. If you have this and you're recording stuff, watch out. You can hear the clickiness. But as a tool, it works for my current setup. Not so much, but I'm going to use it for later. But let's bring this back up here and go back to the top of properties here. So here in the remote, you have all the outer keys. And there's a ton of stuff you can do here. You can set up all your clicks, keyboard, keystrokes, modifiers, navigation, a ton of stuff, different applications. You have so much here. And this is for all of these, but you also have the inner keys and then you also have the ring keys. 
So there's a ton of stuff you can do. Again, the Cintiq has nothing, that's just my pen setup. So for this, I have regular clicks, obviously, man, you know, navigation stuff using this. Then I have the middle mouse for me is this one. So middle mouse click is this. So I use this to drag things around, to open up tabs in a browser, but for sure because of Maya. Because I need that middle mouse clicking and then the right click right there. That's just right clicking for, you know, the menus and context stuff and just like my general setup. And you would think that that's the eraser, but I actually don't have this mapped as an eraser. I'm, I have still mapped opening of folders to this. So when I do this, I can just do that and that opens up the folder. It's much faster. I love it. Of course, in Photoshop, I would map it to Eraser. Like there's there's different things that I use. In my general setup, because I use folders so much. I open up folders all the time and move things around a lot that I have now used this as my primary. And it's kind of like a very satisfying flick of the pen so that the folder opens. So that's what I have for the backside of the button. So and again, you can, you can tweak a bunch of stuff and it's great for the Intuos Pro as well. I, everything is there set up and you have all kinds of different functions. So definitely check this out. I'm probably gonna do a separate clip in terms of uh, pen. I'd say pen workflow from Maya. Someone else has asked me about a pen workflow. It's really just this. That's the, your main button, middle mouse, basically main button, middle mouse, and then the right side. That's my setup in Maya. Now, in terms of hotkeys and things, I had a setup at the beginning with the express keys, and then I went to other third party, there I mentioned Stream Deck and now Loop Deck. So I'm testing a bunch of stuff. So that kind of workflow is changing a lot. So which one would I recommend? That's kind of tricky to answer because I'm using both. My case is just, I like using both because I'm not always drawing. I do like having a regular setup with just the tablet and the keyboard with all the stuff that I'm doing there. And it's also for posture, I like all of this. This has worked out as I'm moving this over to draw a little bit. I don't really have any problems I have it fairly set up where I get closer, bring it down and it's fairly low and I can do all my stuff here and then just lift it a little bit to do something else and bring it down. It's a fairly good setup and I'm, I'm, I really like having the Cintiq and the tablet at the same time. I always had a walking tablet and never a Cintiq. For me, it was always the tablet, computer, and it's just, it's for me in terms of animating and using something for a long period of time, it's much more comfortable to use for me this. Again, I had a different review about an ergonomic mouse. I'm still using the tablet and the pen as I haven't gone back to a mouse unless it's like from other separate things. And even on my second computer, you can see this here, it's, a, it's an older tablet from Wacom. Like I've always had a Wacom tablet. Now with this edition, I really prefer doing drawovers and critiques on a screen that I can draw directly on. So that, ha I, I wouldn't get rid of this. I would not be able, I already have a hard time drawing and drawing just on a tablet looking here, it's even worse. So I definitely use the Cintiq. Other than that, the setup is great. And I love that this functions as a separate monitor. So if I don't use it to draw, I mean, it's overkill. I got four monitors, but it's really a setup that I'm currently using where this is my main work, drawovers, something else. Even if I record, because I have it right below, I can have a window open with notes so I can talk, quickly look, and then keep on talking. That's been a great setup as well. The bigger screen there is for watching things, uh, lectures, things to do is like what I'm, what I have to do next, like a reminder screen. And, and for me, dailies, like I, I like th watching things on the big screen, just to review animation. And then the other screen here is just for my own email and work email and a bunch of stuff where I need to see chats and stuff like that. It's a crazy setup, but I have to say, I really like it. And in terms of workflow, I like little things like flicking my pen to open up a window. I know it sounds silly, but anything that I do repetitively, I want to have either a shortcut or something where I don't have to spend a lot of time. It sounds really like a massive first word problem, but trust me, if you do a lot of repetitive tasks throughout the day, and I do them every day, Monday to Friday, it's just there's something where you just get into a really nice habit. And it's also in terms of, if, if any of you have any hardware, gadgets and tools with knobs and buttons, there's also a certain workflow again where it gets very satisfying in terms of doing something. Flicking the pen like this, very satisfying. So in terms of my preference, I use both in general workflow and just working without doing any drawings. Intuos Pro is great. I like a smaller tablet like this. I don't know, because it's just, again, I have a lot of stuff on my desk and just, I don't need more. It's it's enough ergonomically. It also works really well. I don't think I will go bigger with a regular tablet. Cintiq wise, I think for me, it's really great to do drawers. And if you can afford a stand where like a, a movable arm, that to me would be the preferred setup. If you have to do on the side or you have to set up behind you personally wouldn't go back to the stand that flips back down because then it takes up a lot of room and I still need my keyboard. So in terms of personal preference, I prefer 
a swivel arm just because I can move it out of the way so I can use the tablets and the keyboard and just use this as a second screen. Now, if you do have an express key and you want to set things up and have this in the description, all the links in terms of setup, what you want to do, product links, if you want to check it out. The only other thing I want to mention in terms of cons, which is, it might just be me, but I have found that, and you can see this on the screen, it says right now, Intuos Pro 93%. It's because it's cabled. And when I take the cable off, because this is a Bluetooth um, wireless tablet, right? I can take this off and you could technically work on this. It's I haven't set it up because I always have it plugged in. Now, why do I have it always plugged in? Uh, it's because after a day, battery's dead. I don't know if that's me. Maybe it's the amount of usage or I don't know. I found that after a day, it's dead. And then I got to charge it overnight. And since I'm not moving around and moving my tablet in place somewhere else, I don't know. I have found to just, I'm just going to leave it plugged in. So the wireless aspect is not something I'm going to use. And uh, since I need to plug it in every night anyway to charge it, I'm just going to leave it plugged in all the time. That's just something I want to know. I don't know what, what happens to you. Let me know in the comments. I don't know if you have like a longer day usage or is it something that I have or too many things plugged in, I don't know. And the other thing I wanted to mention, which I've mentioned with the Wacom One as well, is just the cable setup. To be honest, I'm just not a massive fan of the cable setup where as this comes out, it's a massive cable, but then that splits into power and USB and display and everything. Then I wish that, and again, this is something where I don't know how the tech works and how complicated it is, but I would love for this just to be one USB-C cable. That's my biggest, if Wacom is watching this, please, please, please consider this. They're probably going, yeah, we have, you, you, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. I really don't know what I'm talking about. But that's my biggest gripe, it's just the cable. And that's kind of that, I don't know. I'm, I'm really happy with this setup. The responsiveness on, on the screen for drawing is great. All that needs to be improved is, um, is me, my drawing skills, they're horrible. So uh, that that's what I need to do. I'm curious what you think. Maybe I missed something. You know what I mean? Like maybe there's something where like, well, if you do this, it would be so much easier. So let me know in the comments. Maybe you're using this Cintiq. You got some tips and tricks, maybe tips on uh, a different arm, <laughs> that's better. And a different Intuos Pro, maybe you yeah, got maybe a different size, something else that you prefer. I don't know, I'm very curious about people's setup. This is my absolutely bonkers setup that I use that I'm really happy with right now. And that's that, I don't know. Hope that's helpful if you like it. Subscribe if you don't miss any of my uploads. You know, I gotta, I gotta you know, sneak in, sneak in. It's not really sneaky. It's very overt, it's my pitch from my channel. So like and subscribe, the usual that you gotta say, uh, but it helps my channel grow, so thank you. And it's also a longer clip. It's very long, actually. So thank you for still watching. It's very patient of you. And that's that. Thank you, and I will see you in my next clip.